So lately I've been on the hunt for all the worthy Escape from Tarkov competitors out there in order to keep things fresh and one that I have been hearing about non-stop from you guys has been Grey Zone Warfare. This is the brand new trailer that just released today revealing some legit gameplay and I got to sit down with members of the dev team at Madfinger to get the what's what on it. So here is everything that I have right now. Just a quick heads up that this is early gameplay as well as feature planning so this has the infamous subject to change stamp on everything just keep that in mind. The TLDR top down view of things would be that if you like games like Arma or Squad, I think you will need to keep an eye on this game as the vibes I get from it are as if somebody made a really, really interesting extraction mode for either of those games with a dash of anti-Stasi vibes to it. Now, if you just like Escape from Tarkov, it's got a lot here that you'll like, but it's not the same overall gameplay loop. This isn't necessarily an extraction shooter. Games like We the People mirror the gameplay loop of Escape from Tarkov, while games like Grey Zone here mirror the ecosystem and immersiveness where every move that you make matters in a hardcore sandbox FPS setting. At the end of the day, absolutely close enough. Again, if you like games like Armor Squad, absolutely something you need to keep an eye on. While if you just like Escape from Tarkov, just stay tuned, you'll learn more. While if you like both of those, yeah, you're gonna wanna keep watching. Now, when it comes to the subject of extracting, everything is subject to change again, but you will extract to a safe zone, whether it be a main base or point of interest where you can stash your gear. So while you are out on let's call them raids. If you die, you're fully lootable. Whatever you get back to base or your safe zone, again, that's what you get to save. That's what you get to choose whether or not you bring that back out with you or not. However, this base is still in instance or server or whatever they'll end up calling it. From my understanding, the core gameplay loop will be based on a three-sided tug of war between three different factions, all consisting of small groups of players fighting over points of interest across a very large map completely covered with NPCs. This is PVE. That very large map is 42 kilometers squared to be exact and about the size of the Skyrim map for comparison. Each faction is a different PMC group fighting for power in the region, something we've become very familiar with. And again, there will be a heavy PVE content atmosphere where the devs actually said it will be more of a PVE experience, but you are fighting against other players. So you can and will run into PVP, especially if you fight over the same zone on the map. However, direct quote from one of the devs, quote, you can play for hours and not see a single person, end quote. It is very much a PvE game with the possibility of seeing other players rather than a PvEVP game. Something we'll need to really experience ourselves and we'll need to see how it goes. But for sure, if you're a W keyer in Escape from Tarkov, might have just lost you there. But if you're interested, there's a lot more to talk about here. Now, continuing on that note, the devs say that you can play solo if you wish, but will be extremely difficult to survive as the AI are not pushovers. There will also be several different survival elements, but it's not a survival game. The devs wanted to make that clear. You will at the very least need to watch your hydration and food while needing to get somewhat advanced in order to treat any injuries that might pop up. The medical system is quoted to be advanced with even the possibility of organ failure and falling into comas. However, you can apparently still full heal anywhere on the map as long as you have the right materials and or equipment. On that note, I asked if there will be players who will want to play as a medic and then that kind of turned into a discussion about classes where the dev said that there won't be a class system, but you're welcome to coordinate with your team and plan accordingly. There will be NPCs, aka traders, where you will be able to develop relationships with in order to progress and get better gear. Very straightforward there. On that note, the gear available is everything that you would expect, which will be a lot, and we get lots of views of that throughout screenshots, artwork, and of course the trailer. I also got a little bit sneaky here and grabbed a background shot from their website, which shows this PMC clearly wearing an Alton and heavy-ish armor. From that screen and pieces of the trailer, you can tell the UI and inventory system will be something that we're all very well established with, to say the least. Should be very easy to pick up. There will be skill progression. We'll have to see how extensive it is. Didn't get too many details on that, but it is there. And assuming all that stuff is going to be tracked at your main base locations, which while we're on that subject, cannot be attacked or removed in any way, apparently. So no faction base raids. They are safe zones for members of the faction. Again, leaning heavily into this is a PvE experience with the possibility of PvP rather than a PvEVP. Something cool though is there will be VoIP proximity chat, which is always a plus. Something I wish I had asked is uh, since we're, we're not really fighting players off too much, I wonder if we're going to be able to barter with them. There's probably going to be something that pops up with that with VoIP anyway, so it'll be cool. Now, when it comes to the dev team, there is also something that we're not used to as they have over 80 developers from the start. This is actually a very strong studio at the beginning here, at the beginning of the project. BSG didn't start with this and none of the competitors have really started with this when it comes to people that are going for the same aesthetic that they are going for. Obviously, we have games like Marathon with Bungie, but again, I haven't 
done my main video on that right now. <laughs> Marathon's not looking good. We're not getting... With the rumors, if the rumors that we're hearing are true, it's it's not looking good. So I'll do that for, for another day. We'll leave that for another day. Again, this is Madfinger Games, and they have many games under their belt already. However, they have all been mobile games, and this will be their first full-size game. The impression I'm getting, though, is that they use the money they made with the mobile games to grow into something bigger and better, which for now, they definitely seem to be sticking to. As far as I know, the monetization structure will be one-time payment premium game with the possibility of cosmetic microtransactions in the future. They seem to respect the cosmetic only stuff though with no unfair advantage being gained, but it's something we of course will need to watch out for. Unfortunately, we know all that stuff all too well these days. So on the subject of who is developing this game, it's a very, very strong start. I'm very optimistic about this. Last but not least, we have the win state, aka why do we do what we do in gray zone? And apart from saying there was no time limit, I didn't really get an answer on that. So the top-down impression that I get of the gameplay loop right now is very similar to Antistasi and Arma, where you have the massive map, remember about the size of Skyrim map, 42 square kilometers there, and that is littered with points of interest that you can control. One of the factions can take over, but you will need to go and clear it of the AI that are holding the point, which again are not pushovers. Each point of interest will give you something for owning, whether it be gear, a trader, access, medical supplies, ammunition, maybe even just XP at the bare minimum. Minimum. Then of course, on top of that, you're going to be able to take whatever gear you get from the AI that's on location. You're going to be able to store that. I'm assuming you're going to be able to sell it. Hell, maybe the AI on the location is the reward in and of itself. Maybe you can get some vehicles from there. There's a lot of things that can happen and we don't have a lot of specific details on the points of interest and stuff like that just yet. Then once you own that location, the other two factions will want to take it back in order to get the same benefit or reward from that point of interest. So again, it's like a three-way tug of war of controlling locations on the map. So the obvious win state would be if one faction controls all of the major points of interest or, or all of the locations on the map, then they would win. But maybe because your home base doesn't go away, there's always a way to come back for the other factions. I'm not sure. And again, I didn't get much of an answer from the devs on this. I also am not sure what happens with player progression, whether you can keep the progress of your PMC from server to server and more importantly, your gear, which is super important because if you go to one server where it's basically a pushover and you load up on crazy gear, you absolutely will have an unfair advantage on a different server that might just be starting. But maybe there's an intentional gameplay loop to that, or maybe your gear only stays in the server that you obtain it on. Again, again, I'm not sure about the details there, but give me your impressions on that stuff. What do you think would work best? I'm interested in your opinions on that. The dev said that there will be more to come in terms of story and gameplay with early access starting up early next year. So until then, all we have to do is speculate. I've already established a very solid relationship with the devs and they'll be watching this video. So any and all questions, please leave below. I am absolutely going to be keeping a close eye on gray zone here. So stay tuned for more, but that's it for today, guys. Follow me on Twitter, join the discord, come hang out on Twitch, all linked below to support what I do. Click all the buttons on the screen and check out my other channels for other games right here. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a nice day. See you guys.